The US National Toxicology Program took 10 years to conduct a $30 million study into the health effects of EMFs. And it found that higher levels of radio frequency radiation are associated with certain cancers. Now, just to clear up some of the terminology first. Electromagnetic fields, or EMFs, can technically refer to any electromagnetic radiation on the electromagnetic spectrum. But when most people talk about EMFs, they are referring to this part of the spectrum, mostly in the radio wave and microwave area. So this is what I mean when I say EMFs, and I use the term radio frequency radiation interchangeably as well. Mobile phones, Wi-Fi, smart meters, and other wireless devices, including Bluetooth headphones and baby monitors, all use EMFs. And whereas everybody would agree that ionizing radiation like X-rays and gamma rays can be dangerous, most people assume that EMFs do not impact human health. We are all now exposed to EMFs from artificial sources that no previous humans were. I reckon every human innovation has come with some sort of health impact, and I'm betting that EMF-emitting devices are not the exception, and that the impact is not positive. Of course, the effect might be relatively minor, but the fact is that people don't fully know. And rather than applying the precautionary principle, the whole population, including pregnant women and children, have been enrolled into an experiment as to what happens when you bombard humans with artificial EMF sources for their entire life. The National Toxicology Program study was conducted on rats exposed to radio frequency radiation used for 2G and 3G mobile phones. And it found clear evidence of an association with tumors in the hearts of male rats, some evidence of an association with tumors in the brains of male rats, and some evidence of an association with tumors in the adrenal glands of male rats. In addition to seeing tumors in the male rats with higher exposures to radio frequency radiation, NTP scientists also observed other changes in the hearts of exposed male and female rats that supported their conclusions. As well as cancer, NTP found lower body weights among newborn rats and their mothers, especially when exposed to high levels of radiofrequency radiation during pregnancy and lactation. And they found that radiofrequency radiation exposure was linked with significant increases in DNA damage in the frontal cortex of the brain in male mice, the blood cells of female mice, and the hippocampus of male rats. The studies question the long-held assumption that radio frequency radiation is of no concern as long as the energy level is low and does not significantly heat the tissues. Remember, this is 2G and 3G on rats. But what about Wi-Fi plus 5G plus smart meters plus endless wireless devices on children and pregnant women? The rats got two years of exposure. We are getting decades of it. The levels and duration of exposure to radio frequency radiation were much greater than what people experience with even the highest level of cell phone use and exposed to the rodents' whole bodies. So these findings should not be directly extrapolated to human cell phone usage. We note, however, that the tumors we saw in these studies are similar to tumors previously reported in some studies of frequent cell phone users. This is in reference to gliomas, a type of brain tumor that some, but not all, human population studies have suggested may be associated with heavy mobile phone use. Other studies have raised concern about the possibility of EMFs altering the blood-brain barrier and impacting hormone systems, as well as a possible association between proximity to power lines and childhood leukemia. See the links in the description. And of course, there might be other subtle but widespread effects on humans that we have not picked up on yet. Plus, people's exposure to EMF emitting devices continues to increase, and we'll only get a clearer picture of the effects of that several decades from now. I don't really want my kids enrolled into this experiment any more than they already are, and I don't want to wait several decades for the results. So we use three simple steps to help limit our exposure. Firstly, we try to keep our distance from any device transmitting EMFs, notably our Wi-Fi router at home. The further away, the better, since levels of exposure decrease with distance. Also, keeping mobile phones away from the body and making calls on speakerphone where possible rather than pressed against your head. Secondly, turning things off when not needed. The Wi-Fi goes off every night as early as possible in the evening, and mobile phones are on airplane mode as much as possible. This step goes hand in hand with minimizing time with EMF emitting tech. 
Thirdly, avoiding unnecessary EMF transmitting devices, such as wireless headphones, smartwatches, and any smart household appliance. I also haven't taken up my energy company's suspiciously generous offer for a free smart meter. A fourth option would be blocking EMFs, but we don't currently attempt that as we feel our exposure is reduced enough with the first three approaches, which are free and simple. But that would be something I'd look into if I could not avoid or turn off any EMF sources that I was concerned by. And even if EMFs pose no health risk whatsoever, there is no doubt that setting limits around tech is going to improve people's mental and physical health. Some scientists have speculated that EMFs could cause cancer by reducing levels of the hormone melatonin. There is some evidence that melatonin may suppress the development of certain tumours. Melatonin is the darkness hormone that increases in our bodies as light levels go down in the evening. It's an extremely important anti-inflammatory and repair hormone. So it's interesting some are suggesting that EMFs may suppress its production because one thing that definitely does suppress the production of melatonin and by doing so increases cancer risk along with loads of other diseases is artificial light. I've covered this in a previous video. The link is in the description because it's a really important health topic to be aware of. I'd be interested to hear what you reckon about EMFs. Should we be concerned or not worry? And definitely let me know in the comments if you have any other steps you take to limit your exposure. Thanks for watching. Please do subscribe and I'll see you next time.